Okay, uh, we're actually going to try a new segment, so I want you guys to roll with us. Well, listen, let's do something that maybe we can all chime in on. Uh, with us on the phone now is uh, uh, my good friend Tyson Sanner. Tyson, are you there? Live <laughs> Hello. Radio. Tyson! Hello, sir. And it's nice to have you join the program. Yes, uh, how, how's everybody today? Got hey, man, it's good to have you here. And for those of us who don't know, Tyson is our entertainment editor. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Uh-huh. Now I can do Lights, camera, action. Crush your enemies. 60% of the time. Everybody has a song. Every time. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. I'm like, has got to go back and get a shit You fall night. Are you not entertained? Are you not I'm entertained? entertained. <clears throat> yeah, there you go. See, yeah. Ty- Tyson, you're with us to talk a little bit of film. What do you got for us today, buddy? Today's selection is Plan 9 from Outer Space. A classic. Ah, I think we all have respect for Ed Wood. All right, go ahead. Absolutely. Well, um, uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space was a film that uh, was originally titled Grave Robbers from Outer Space. And uh, it was released in 1959, being shot in 1956 for a budget of $60,000, which today would be about a quarter of a million. And it stars Bela Lugosi, sort of. In his uh, final role, unfortunately, he died approximately three months before the film actually began being shot. So they used uh, stock footage interposed with a uh, double, I guess you'd say, who didn't really resemble him, but it almost kind of fits together in the editing, which is actually kind of the point to me. The It's all make-believe, so if you have decent editing in this regard, I, I could, I enjoyed the story and kind of what it was trying to do and... Despite all of its flaws, it's it's just a very... I, I, I have a deep affection for this film. <laughs> I've got a quick question for you. Now, we just had actually Juliet Lando on a couple of weeks back. Uh, yes, Who was yes. in the film Ed Wood with Johnny Depp. And in mm-hmm. that film, they actually portray the making of Plan 9. And how accurate would you say that was? Well, it seems quite a bit of it was pretty accurate. There are some uh, little details that aren't... Uh, consistent uh when bella is filming his scenes outside of his quote-unquote house in edward the film it was actually apparently toward johnson's house but it probably worked better for the uh story and the way it flowed they would have had to explain i suppose why they made a detour um the other footage uh, of him in his vampire cape was uh taken during 19 i believe also 1956 for an untitled project or uh, sorry an unrealized project called the vampire's tomb or, um, let's see, what was that also Vampire's called? Vampire's Tomb. That's a good. That's a good yeah, title. Who was the up. woman? Wasn't the Vampirella was also in Plan Nine? From... Vampira, yeah. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Uh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 no. It was a. He, Ryan was asking you if Vampira was in the film, and she is. Absolutely, she uh, was the late night talk. Uh, excuse me, the late night horror theater host. Uh, yes. Maya, Maya Nurmi uh, uh, later, I believe, sued Elvira for in copyright infringement on character oh. type. But um, she was, and she refused. I believe it was pretty much she did refuse to speak, uh, and that that was accurate. Uh, one thing that I found ac- recently while looking it up is that uh, Gregory Walcott, the actor who plays the lead pilot, Jeff Trent, in the film, actually had quite a bit of acting experience uh, previous to Plan 9, although in the film it, it was portrayed as him just sort of arriving on the set and, who's this? Oh, this is our choir teacher. Well, right. he actually, actually had quite a few television credits leading up to it. Uh, Four in 1952, only one in 1953 and four. In 55, he had eight roles, and in 56, another eight, but nine if you count Plan 9. So he was pretty well established and is actually one of the reasons I enjoy the film so much because he's so earnest in his performance. Um, being on these fake sets and playing make-believe with everybody else, and it's... Uh, <laughs> So there's a level, there's a level of sincerity there, but it's not so much. I think in the film, Ed Wood, right? They all got baptized to get the money from the church to make the movie, and then the church executive showed up and said, "This is your leading guy." Basically, pulled a studio stunt only through the church channels. Yes. And uh, and what you're saying is is that he did show up like that, but he had some experience. He wasn't just pulled off the you know out of the church choir and Shazam. Exactly. Yes, uh, but and uh, <clears throat> that that sort of thing. But for the most part, there it's it's fairly accurate. They were very faithful with a lot of the recreations of the uh, of the scenes, including the the silly. There's this uh, wonderful set that Tor Johnson, as he's rising from the grave, which is a very key element to the plot. Uh, in actually, you know what? Should I go back and explain a little bit of the plot and what the idea of, well, of when where you're it's talking, going is? I think when you're talking about an Ed Wood film, is there really any plot to explain, uh, Tyson? <laughs> uh, I mean, are we really... Certainly. Are we, are we, 
you know, and I should explain to our listeners what we're doing here is the idea is Tyson is going to bring sort of a vintage classic film, so to speak, in one way or another to the show's attention. So it's not necessarily going to be your mainstream entertainment. It's going to be something unique. And in this case, he picked Plan 9 because there's some things he likes about it uh, at sort of a sincere uh, level. So if you're thinking you're going to get a review of War Horse or something like that, that's somebody else's show. So, all right, give us the plot points real quick. <laughs> Well, uh, the plot of the film involves extraterrestrial beings who are seeking to stop humans from creating a doomsday weapon that would destroy the universe. And in order to do this, they basically uh, arrive near the planet and then decide they're going to reanimate dead people to let Earth people know that something, although non-specifically, is going on. And that is where they are when uh, that's what what happens when they when they get to earth so they raise uh, bella lugosi's character his quote unquote uh, wife from the grave that's vampira um tor johnson the swedish wrestler played by george the animal steel in the film uh was a, a, a police inspector who happened to be investigating um i believe it was the strange lights and whatnot in the sky and uh, basically the idea that a <laughs> a spaceship is near goes looking for it and it becomes uh, one of the other undead and oh i'm missing i believe that uh bella lugosi's character was raised before inspector clay but so it's a uh, master plan you've got uh you know an apocalyptic situation and the aliens have to stop it and the only way they can do that is by implementing plan nine what plan will you follow now plan nine it's been absolutely impossible to work through these earth creatures their soul is too controlled Plan 9. Ah, yes. Plan 9 deals with the resurrection of the dead. Long-distance electrodes shot into the pineal pituitary glands of recent dead. Yes, they want to intimidate the Earth people into realizing that they're making terrible, terrible mistakes. Uh, apparently, we are on the verge of creating a substance known as solar benite, which is... Uh, it has the effect of exploding sunlight molecules. Solar benite. The solar benite... So what if we do develop this solonite bomb? When you have the solonite, you have nothing. You speak of solonite. You see? You see? Your stupid minds. Stupid. Stupid. That's all I'm taking from you. Get back here, you fool! My question is, do you actually need to know this to watch the movie? And can you understand this is actually getting across? Because you're very cerebral. I mean, would I understand that this is sort of like what's going on in this movie? Because this film is pretty <laughs> atrocious in many ways. I mean, this I is... Believe, go ahead. Is this the one... Where's the one where the giant octopus attacks Bella Lugosi? And Lugosi has to move the octopus arms when he's in the swamp. <laughs> like, he has to move his own... Like, he, he, you know, he has to maneuver the <coughs> fake octopus to look like it's attacking him. Is that this movie? That's actually Bride of the Monster. It was a film he made uh, just before it. Actually, there's a film between Bride of the Monster and Plan 9 that doesn't get talked about in the uh, film, Ed Wood, and that's Jailbait, which had, uh, I guess, w what was Steve Reeves' title? Was he, I don't want to say Man of the Year. What did they call him back then? Not America's Sexiest Man. He was a, a, a lifter, a... Mr. Uh, Universe. Was he Mr. Universe? Was he a Mr. Mm Universe, Steve Reeves? I, I think he was, yeah. That sounds right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, and and that actually was not a bad film either. I mean, on some levels, it's 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 probably better than Plan Nine in the sense that they didn't uh, try to do too many sci-fi elements, so they tried to get by mostly on story. And it's a very Twilight Zone esque story, but not many people mention that one. I I, I didn't even know it existed for many years until uh, just after Ed Wood was. Uh, was released as a film, and I renewed my obsession with uh, finding as many movies as uh, of Ed Wood's as I could. That's to awesome watch. that you're making the effort to be a sincere Ed Wood fan, because I don't think any of us have heard of that movie either. So, uh, <laughs> you're one of the few. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to revisit this a little bit later, because of course the show's over, and I think a lot of people are relieved. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't bring the, I didn't bring my notepad, <laughs> not because of you, but just because uh, it's been that kind oh, of day. Man. I mean, I think people can listen to Tyson talk about Ed Wood all fucking day. But the problem is, the only way you'd be able to do it is you'd have to do it by listening to me too and running the show, and then and, at that uh, point, that's when everyone climbs back into their tiger cage. And Scott, <laughs> Scott helps. But, uh, Scotch helps. Listen, see that? That's and that's family talking right there. Yeah. But uh, Tyson, we we actually had a very interesting documentary pick on the books to discuss today. The show ran late. Um, mm -hmm. You know, yes. we're all going to go up there. We're all going to beat Bagel like a pinata as soon as we get out of the studio. <laughs> but uh, next week, we'll bring you back and we'll talk about some additional films we discussed that our audience should really hear and embrace because they're fucking fantastic classics. So, Tyson, I want to say thank you for joining us. 
Thank you for having me, sir. And thank and uh, it was nice, uh, quote unquote, meeting all of you today. Yeah. Ooh. Sorry, there was actually no introduction. I'm sorry, that's my fault. But with us yep. is Rick Mora from Twilight, The Dead of the Damned, yep. J. Row of the Licks, Mark yep. Ryan of Transformers. And, uh, you know, everyone's trying to get the fuck out of here. So, uh, <laughs> we're, uh, we'll get to more later, buddy. Thank Classic. You Absolute. In. Thank Classic. you for our Thank you, 101. <laughs> yes. He knows Thank his you, stuff. He knows his stuff. Cheers, Tyson. Yeah, Thank we you. see that. Yeah, see, yeah, he cool. knows what's up. Yeah. Wait, hold on. I want to play his closing music. Oh, just see, he I... has a closing song, too. And the closing. Oh, I'll, get, man. I'll get some music together for you. Here it goes. All right, here we go. Lights, camera, action. Crush your enemies. 60% of the time, it works every time. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Somebody's got to go back and get a shitload of time. <laughs> Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. You, you guys want some theme music, too? Do you guys get some theme music? Every superhero needs theme music. Right. Oh, yes.